Delta Force 35 and I uh, got it all painted up in that last video and uh, working on getting the electronics installed like I had said I'm putting the 4070 TP power and right now I'm using the OSE the offshore electrics 150 it's up to a 6s speed controller uh, later on I may throw the C King high voltage 130 amp hobby wing ESC on it and maybe run it on 8s uh, but for the time being we're going to go with the TP power uh, that 150 amp OSE electronic speed controller should be plenty of power for this motor uh, almost put the motor in without putting the water jacket on glad I caught that before I got everything bolted up uh, using the TFL uh, motor bed it's carbon fiber with aluminum motor mounts and you definitely want to make sure you got everything right before you put it in because it takes a few minutes to get it all in and out again and what I like to do when I'm putting my water tube my water cooler on I like to put a little bit of oil or grease on the o-rings just to uh, lube it up so it doesn't have a dry fit you dry fit it on your motor and it slides and it may tear your o-ring has happened to me before but it's no big deal they sell extra o-rings you just slide it right onto the motor itself kind of give it a little turn while you're doing it make sure it's going the right way okay. all right and we're going to put the front the rear engine mount on this is a massive motor you guys it draws a lot of power this is a 1950 kV motor and I should push just about any propeller I want to put on here alright get these tightened up I did put Loctite on them so there is Loctite on the screws I, I recommend putting Loctite on all your screws on a boat every one of them and make sure you use stainless steel screws because you don't last thing you want is a screw rusting and breaking off on you TP power 4070 1950 kV motor um, to the TFL carbon fiber motor bed um, today we're going to be finishing up the stinger installation um, along with the flex cable and the liner um, when you're when you're installing these cables onto these stuffing tubes you've got to make sure your moat motor is dead set in line with the keel of the boat um, if your motor is off offset to the side like say three millimeters you need to offset the stuffing to three millimeters um, if you don't you won't have a true propulsion uh, you know you'll get prop walk um, and your boat won't run true so what I mean by the keel the keel is the center line on the bottom of a boat um, you want that stuffing tube dead in line with the keel all the way down um, 
you may you may be able to slide with a little 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 angle because you can bend your stuffing tube just a slight bend to straighten it out when it comes to the the flex cable and the Teflon liner. We'll be back with the with the nuts and bolts and I'll show you where we're putting everything. Alright, now that we got the um everything lined up true I've got my nuts and bolts um, washers um, everything I need to get this stinger bolted up what I'm gonna do is just use my eyesight my vision and um, try to get this thing true with the keel sometimes you can use a, a yardstick or a ruler to uh, make sure it's, it's perfectly straight this one here looks perfect mark your holes with a scribe all right and then drill I'll come back all right I'm back got the holes drilled um, everything looked pretty good um, so what I'm gonna do is get my my, my bolt and I'm gonna put a washer on there uh, the, the larger the washer the better uh, there's a lot of pressure back there when you're going high speeds and that amount of torque um, on a stinger and transom so I definitely make sure you use washers um, use some type of sealant silicone um, Silicone waterproof sealant is great. Uh, Permatex is an, another great um, watertight water seal um, adhesive. Uh, I think Gorilla Glue makes one too. But uh, on, on this application, I'm going to use some clear silicone. Get a pretty heavy coat on there. And um, put the, the nuts and bolts with the washers uh, on both, both sides of your, your screw. Um, once I get that bolted up, I'll show you guys uh, exactly what it looks like. Well, I'm back and I got I got the two nuts and bolts in the street stinger. You can see it there behind the the stuffing tube. Um, I've got one top hole that I have another three millimeter screw to put in and we'll be done uh, I wanted to add that I would definitely use stainless steel nuts and bolts and washers uh, you don't want your um, hardware to rust um, Yeah, I wanted to throw in to you, to you that if uh, if you don't have one of these flex drivers, um, this is a mini flex driver with um, the small bits. I would recommend getting one. My wife picked this up for me um, a couple months ago, and and I I fell in love with it. It gets right into those hard to reach places. You just can't get your hands in there with a uh, traditional Allen wrench. All right, I couldn't, I couldn't find uh, where the hole was lined up at, but this thing does. It worked great for getting into them hard to reach places. Just gotta put some pressure on it, put some force into it when you're doing it. Also, I like to put a a magnet on my bit. When, I know these are stainless steel screws, but they do have a little bit of steel in there. 
uh, that magnet will actually help hold that screw in place when you're finding your hole um, in, in the hole. Uh, this is a neoplenium earth, rare earth magnet and it comes off and it's just a small little washer looking magnet. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's but it definitely comes in handy. I got the um, I got the stinger all bolted up. Um, it's all set. I've got everything actually lined up pretty nicely for me. Um, hopefully you got. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna try to hold it so that you can see it in this light here. There we go. Is that this better? Um, you can see that the, the flex cable goes into the stinger and comes out the tip, the stuffing tube, and then the Teflon liner, and then your flex cable lines right up with the, the chuck, the flex cable collet, uh, but that's what it should look like from the inside and from the outside all we got to do is tighten up the collet and put the drive dog on the pro uh, prop shaft I'm running a 3 16 inch prop shaft um, and the cable is 0 .50, 150 uh, millimeters, which is just a, a little bit smaller than 3 16 of an inch. Just a li little smaller. Just going to snug that up just for right now until we can get this drive dog on the cape on the shaft here it needs to be pushed up more you see the drive dog it's the drive dog and that actually we're going to use a big prop so you can see it uh, goes on the back side of the propeller itself uh, those two dog teeth I guess you'd call it line right up with the drive gear here on the back of the prop and all it has is one grub screw holding it into place on that flat spot in the shaft um, I would definitely recommend using permanent thread locker uh, lots of vibrations and back here on the shaft and I, I, I go kind of crazy with it but you don't really have to, not with the permanent. Um, that's why I keep a little blowtorch on hand when I'm taking, um, when I'm doing, taking off props and drive dogs, I use a blowtorch to heat, heat up the area and that actually uh, loosens the, it'll let the, the nut be loose. right we're going to tighten up this actually we're going to pull out the grub screw put a little thread lock on that and then make sure you're lined up with your flat spot it's on the shaft and then you just tighten this down and what I like to do is I wiggle it back and forth to make sure you get a good seat on the um, on that flat spot. I wiggle it, tighten it, wiggle it, tighten it. Get a good good bond there on that grub screw. Alright, I think that's good. Um, now let's see if we can get this prop shaft pushed back up into the collet. I don't recommend using needle nose pliers when I just snugged it up. 
All right, good, good deal. Um, let me grab a thrust washer. You need a thrust washer be behind your drive dog and in front of, or behind the stinger and in front of the drive dog. You need a washer in between there. It's a Teflon washer uh, made for friction. Give me one minute. Okay, I'm back. Um, got the got the flex cable out. I was grabbing the um, thrust washer, and all you do is put it on your cable before you slide it in the shaft. Now, I just want to say that this will be greased once we get the shaft in there, and uh, before we put it in the water. But I'm not greasing it now for. Um, it's, it's messy once you get grease on it, but you just slide it in there, put it in the collet. Make sure your your drive dog butts right up to the end of your um, stinger. You want you want just a little bit of play there between that washer and the uh, drive dog. Uh, one reason um, you don't want it so tight it causes friction, melts the washer. Uh, second reason you um, your when you have the torque from the motor actually uh, will twist this tighter and it shrinks the um, the flex cable and in length so you want a little bit of play in between your stinger and drive dog just for that look just in case you you do tighten up on that cable too much with the torque of a, a big motor um, that being said uh, we're going to throw a prop on here just so y'all can see it mounted up and um, I'm gonna, uh, we'll see you uh, next time I'm going to probably call it a night I'm tired but i uh, got a bunch of different projects going on right now and uh, I'm going to have a lot more content to my channel I'm new to this uh, YouTube thing but and everyone's told me to uh, start a YouTube uh, channel and it, since I have a passion for this type of stuff and uh, I love building boats grew up around boats um, I've also got into the um, the cars the armor Creighton Rustler 4S Creighton and Granite um, but this is really what got me into the hobby was the boats and I put it on the back burner now you just want to put make sure you uh, file down your the back of your prop where the prop dog goes um, you want a good fit in there not too much play um, then you could put your 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 nut one one nut and then I usually put a another nut on to back it and get them good and tight um, also you know you or you could get the you know a more aerodynamic style uh, prop nut but I, I like the double nut system I feel like I feel like I'm I can get it tighter I don't think I grabbed the wrong nut but you get the idea um, I think I'm gonna run a 1512 Octura prop well, let me see if I'm right on that it's been a while uh, M447 M447 uh, prop uh, by Octera. Uh, you have to mount and balance these propellers uh, just like you would a real boat propeller. Um, you you want to you know always um, keep them shined up and balanced. Um, out of balance prop will throw a lot of strain on your flex cable, your tr on transom. Um, throw a lot of prop wash and waste um, so you always want to mount and balance your propellers uh, these little propeller balancers are cheap they're maybe 15 bucks offshore electrics eBay um, so yeah alright so next next we're going to mount up the electronic speed controller um, I'm, I'm going with the offshore electrics uh, speed controller it's a uh, it's a it's really a great controller for the money 
uh, 60 bucks, 150 amp, 6S, 2 to 6S, um, comes with a cat pack for, uh, also, uh, it came with, uh, ends, wire ends, but I, I didn't use the ones that came with it, I used the EC5 connectors, I use EC5 for everything, um, and what I did was I, I built, or fashioned, a uh, I hand laid some fiberglass um, for this ESC shelf and so this motor fits right in between the the batteries and the motor for a good balance you want your boat balanced one third up uh, so she gets up on plane faster better for cornering um, so yeah it's gonna fit there and then we'll have the this is the water pickups for your for your rudder, it pulls water once you're underway. Um, pulls water through the tubes. The tubes go to the motor water jacket. Also goes through the ESC. All right, guys, I, I'm actually going with the uh, Savix uh, waterproof servo. Um, going to try to uh, get this thing mounted up into its proper place. Um, I got my, my servo mount here, and this is a push rod. Uh, this push rod actually came from an, an outboard motor uh, cable um, for the steering cable, and it has it comes with a. Uh, if you guys have boats or outboards, you know um, they have like a almost like a, a liner inside of it that this cable slides in and in and out of. So I just, I, I, I used some uh, epoxy and I epoxied that, um, that liner through the hole and it's, and it's worked great. Kept the water out, uh, the, the stainless steel, um, push rod, of course it won't rust. So now I'm getting the servo arm on the, um, the end of my push rod has a Z bend. And I just kind of get it lined up for the time being, and then that push rod hooks up to the to the rudder itself. So we're going with the Savic servo. I uh, just want to check it and see if it's working correctly before I go through the process of installing it. Um, that's hooked up. I got my remote out. I'm just trying it out on this STX3 by Spectrum. Um, Sounds like everything went through its process, startup process. Got power to the motor. Um, that's only 3S. This goes up to 6S. Uh, got the servo hooked up. Let's check it out. Got to move the servo horn. To a different position so we get a good accurate uh, rudder position and a neutral position but it is working so I'm gonna go ahead and start the installation process hooking up a servo is rather easy you just uh, you know put it in its place get your your screws and, and slide them in like so get them just kind of snug them up and then tighten them all four of them down all at one time in a crisscross pattern. Uh, is it going to be going to give me a hard time here? Of course it is. in there I use that little magnet on the end of my driver um, and the other one so I'm gonna show you a little trick here I got a tight place to drill a little hole not quite big enough for that other screw uh, I use a I actually use the push rod and I can bend it into a tight corner and give it some juice Let's see if it'll drill this hole out for us. All right. 
right. Uh, thanks, Pops. <sighs> Learn a trick every day. Other screw into place, and then we can set the we can set the rudder position. I can't get this on there. I hope this screw's got a little bit of magnetism. Let's see. This helps me get them screws in those real tight places. I've got huge fingers, as you can tell. Alright. Let's see if it'll hold it in place for me. I'm telling you guys, I wouldn't steer you the wrong way. Be out in the water in no time if you're building a boat. 30 knots and no smoke, come on. Yep, these things are a blast to have. I, I, I love them. I build them from scratch. I'm working on a mold process, pulling a boat hole. 32 inch stepped hole off of a mold which I'll be showing you in my channel later on um, alright let's make sure the servo is centered up we'll plug it in let's make sure it's centered on the remote which it is Slide this horn on. I like to, I like for it to be vertical as much as possible, so you get the most out of each swing of the arm. I'm gonna turn the boat around so y'all can see. Let's see, can you see that right there? That's the rudder. Up a little bit. All right, something's too tight. All right, this is where I, on my particular rudder, this is where you loosen and tighten up the the rod. There. Let's hope it. Oh. Don't want to take a chance and stripping your grub screw it's already tight kind of loose as it is anytime you're heating up uh, anything on your RC just be aware of the surroundings you don't want to heat up anything that shouldn't be heated up um, I'll get it good and hot because that thing's starting to strip out I think I'm gonna get another I am going to use a different Allen. I'm going to get it good and hot. All right. All right, there it is. Got a mess going here. my mess though I know where it's at I know where everything is my mess and it loosened up got lucky bind up a little bit there what's going on here must be gotten some corrosion on it let's see if we can figure out what's going on here may have to get off video and figure out what's going on let's see here I'll give it a little tap don't come out we gotta we'll go off camera alright that ain't gonna work I don't want to 
mess anything up. So we'll be back shortly. Alright, I got it figured out. It was just uh, I needed some lube on it from being used previous. So I got my rudder in the center position. I've got to get a screwdriver, flathead. Too big. Flathead to tighten up this adjustment screw. The wire goes through. Uh, once you get the final adjustments, I would put Loctite on this screw for sure. Uh, not permanent. I wouldn't use a permanent. Use a removable, a removable thread lock. All right. Let's see if we have movement on the rudder. Nice. See the servo arm working. Next, we're going to run the the water cooling tubes. Uh, you have to run them to the motor, to the ESC, and out the back of the boat. Uh, I'm going to get the um, tubes to the hoses for the for the installation. All right, guys, we got the I got the hoses here for the installation of the uh, water cooling. Um, on these rudders I would suggest any type of rudder you buy that has pre-drilled uh, water pickups I would drill them out more you can actually see where the drill bit um, let's see can you see it where the drill outline is where I drilled down took the Dremel and drilled out the pickups more um, I was my runner my motor and, and ESC was running really really hot uh, one day after I had just got this um, rudder and it was the pickups were too small there was barely any water running to the motor so pay close attention to your new um, rudders if they need to be drilled out drill them because these, these electronics cost too much money to burn up all right might cut that one shorter uh, this is where the motor is going to exit I actually made these um, through holes and epoxied them in this I use brass tube like you use for the stuffing tube and I uh, cut some copper and drilled it out and uh, shaped it and buffed it for the for the outlets um, pretty pretty came out pretty good I was surprised how well it came turned out run this one and I'm gonna cut that off Alright, that, and then we're going to do a bend here, looks good, grab some more, uh, silicone works, silicone tubing works great, that's what they recommend, uh, at the moment I don't have any silicone tubing, and, um, but I will get some, I want it to match the color scheme of the boat. Sometimes you got to stretch these tubes out a little bit. And what I like to do is I heat them up just for a split second. And it softens up that tubing enough you can put it on your pipe once it cools down. Uh, I'll go back and zip tie all these hoses down. And um, might run them a little bit cleaner 
maybe not. They look all right. I think I'm just going to zip tie the speed controller down with maybe some Velcro on the bottom. I already got one, one side of the Velcro on. And then on your ESC, you run your inlet and then you run it out. And on this one side here, you just do a little uh, <clears throat> loop or you can run dual. I can make both of these come to straight to the ESC but you would have to run a separate pickup like on this boat here you'd have to run a separate pickup for for the motor um, which I like those pickups better those actually pull a lot of water uh, it runs it through the system the more water the better uh, the cooling you have um, alright so we got everything hooked up here and uh, the hoses are run. We've got to spray some corrosion X in this receiver. We're going to get it wet. I put it in, but um, I wanted to see if we had anything leaking, like major. Doesn't look like it. Oh, I just seen a drop. Where did it come from? Where did my drop come from? Oh, I see it. It's coming through the steering servo. Uh, the rod linkage, the through hole there. So we'll have to check that out. Uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. Uh, the Kraken Delta Force 35. Uh, see if you can see it running around the pool here. Just for sh giggles. Oh, we have power. We have power. Oh. Okay, okay, got some, got a little bit of pickup there. Oh, 